You may be seated. <laughs> Greetings in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come this absolutely perfect afternoon to join in marriage Paula and David. It is our fondest hope and prayer that together your separate lives might now forever more explore discover whole new worlds new dimensions of love a wedding celebration is both a time of anticipation and also a time of reflection as we remember fondly those who so shaped our lives and brought us to this day paul's father paul straley passed away September, 9, September 11th, 2009. But this day surely in part is his as well. And he is ever so present in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and remembered by the symbol of love, a single red rose in his seat. All of daily. The prayer of every soul here is that you would experience a lifetime of enriched, growing happiness in marriage. Happiness in marriage doesn't just happen. A good marriage must be created. And so often in the art of marriage, and it is something of an art, in the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It's never being too old to hold hands. It's remembering to say those three little words, I love you, at least once a day. It's never going to sleep angry. It's at no time taking the other person for granted. The courtship, don't let it end with the honeymoon. Keep on romancing, keep on flirting, keep on dating with each other through the years. It's having a mutual sense of values and common objectives, and then by golly, standing together, facing the world. It's doing things for each other and not out of a sense of duty or sacrifice, but a spirit of joy. It's speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It's not expecting the husband to wear a halo or the wife to have the wings of the angels. It's not looking for perfection in one another. Rather, it's, it's cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, a sense of humor. It's having that marvelous capacity to be able to forgive and forget. It's giving each other an atmosphere where each of you can grow. It's establishing a relationship where the independence is equal, the dependence is mutual, the obligation reciprocal. 
it's not only marrying the right partner, it's also being the right partner. And it's forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family, these and many things more. These are the art of marriage. And so with this in mind, David, I direct this question first to you. David, do you take Paula to be your wife and will you love, respect, and honor her sharing your hopes, your dreams, your thoughts, your interests, your feelings and emotions through crisis and anxiety, through joy and pleasure, always caring for her in lifelong commitment? If so, answer, I do and I will. I do. Paula, I direct this question to you. Paula, do you take David to be your husband and will you love, respect, and honor him, sharing your hopes and your dreams, your thoughts, your interests, your feelings and emotions, through crisis and anxiety, through joy and pleasure, always caring for him in lifelong commitment? If so, answer, I do and I will. Before I have you profess your vows to each other, there is a context, and this is the moment for that context, of what love is, more what love does. A wise old apostle Paul wrote about this, and he describes love in 15, like 15 ingredients to find marital cuisine, if you will. Listen again to these words. He says, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, it is not proud, love is not rude, nor is it self-seeking. Love is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. Love always protects always trusts, always hopes, and always, always perseveres. Love, he writes, never fails. Now faith, hope, love, these three remain. The greatest of these is love. And he concludes this section of his writing with this little epitaph at the end. Make love your aim. Make love your aim. And as you do this, as you build your marriage in love, the art of marriage, and as you make love the aim, our prayer and our hope and our confidence is that you will experience that rich, fabulous experience of growing, ever-growing intimacy and oneness in your marriage. And with that in mind, I'll now have you profess your vows to one another. I'll have you go first. Repeat after me, David, repeat after me. I, Charles David. I, Charles David. Take you, Paula. Take you, Paula. To be my wife. To, be my wife. to love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer, for poorer. For richer and in poorer. Through good times and bad. Through good times and bad. As long as we both shall live. Paul, I'll have you profess your vows. David, repeat after me. I, Paula, take you, Charles David, to be my husband, to love and to cherish, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, through good times and bad, as long as we both shall live. The rings. The circle has long been a symbol of God and of perfect love. Without beginning, without end, and no point of weakness, the circle is a reminder of the eternal quality of love, the eternal quality of God, and of unending strength. As these rings are of the finest of earth's material, so love is the richest of spiritual values. Thus, 
These rings serve as a reminder of the relationship you have with God and the relationship you have with each other. Let us pray. Bless now, O Lord, these rings that each who gives one and each who wears one might ever abide in your love and grow in grace. I give you this ring as a symbol of our marriage and the unbroken bond of our love. Repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of our marriage and the unbroken bond of our love. as much as David and Paula have now in this place, in this hour, before God, family, and friends. Pledge their love, their faith to each other, sealing their vows and the giving the receiving of rings. I do now pronounce them, I pronounce you, husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Dios le bendiga y le guarde. And now it is my pleasure and privilege to present for the first time to all the assembled family and friends, Mr. and Mrs. Charles David and Paula Peloso.